Thanks, thanks, and uh, thanks everyone for joining. I am Yuval Avrami, I'm a security researcher at Palo Alto Networks, uh, where, where me and the rest of my team, we look into the security of the cloud and containers uh, specifically. And I'm very excited today to be presenting you HUSI, uh, which is a tool I wrote. Uh, it's actually a container image that can be used to look under the hood of container as a service platforms. So let's start off by going over the agenda. So we'll start off by talking about what our container as a service platforms are and why are they interesting. We'll then talk about HUSI, what it does and how it does it. Then I'll show a quick demo. Uh, we'll go over uh, into the low levels of the implementations. And uh, finally, I'll discuss some of the findings that I was able to uh, see with HUSI. Uh, and we'll wrap it up with some questions. So let's start with container as a service. So you probably heard about some of the uh, container as a service platforms out there. You have AWS Fargate, Azure Container Instances, Google Cloud Run, and uh, more recently, IBM Code Engine. And those platforms are really a way to run serverless containers. They're a way for you to take a container, just upload it to the cloud, and have it process events, scale up and scale down according to demand. And it's really a way to you know, run your services without managing on, or worrying about the underlying infrastructures, uh, managing the underlying servers, or managing the underlying nodes, uh, which is a really great way uh, to, you know, it's really a way to improve your ease of use of those platforms. But on the other hand, without management, you really have no visibility into how your containers run on the cloud. And that brings the question, can you really trust container as a service platforms with your containers? So what could be an issue? Well, container as a service platforms, like you know every public cloud offering, uh, runs your workloads alongside other customers' workloads, right? So you need to trust uh, the platform to segregate your workloads uh, from other customers' wor workloads because there may be a malicious customer. But with container as a service offerings, you really have almost no visibility into how your container runs. You just upload your container image, it receives some you know, HTTP endpoint, uh, but without, beside that, you don't know, you know, how is the cloud provider, how is the cloud provider protecting uh, your workloads, and that's really what HUSI uh, tries to do. So the motivation is really to gain visibility into how container as a service platforms run our containers, and the way HUSI, HUSI does it, it's really a container image that, upon execution, exfiltrates the underlying host container runtime. To a remote server and it actually sends the actual binary and you might see something pretty interesting that you have a container that reads a file from the host the container runtime so we'll get to how HUSI does that in just a bit but let's start off by seeing a demo so what i have here is a file server that will receive the runtime and I'm going to use IBM Code Engine, which is a CAS platform. So first, I'm, I'm creating a job template. And it uses the HUSI container image, as you can see. And now I'm going to deploy the HUSI container to IBM Cloud and have it run it in their container as a service platform. So this is a live demo, so hopefully it will work. Okay, so the container is just now uploaded and you can see that the file server received the serve, uh, some file and we'll just wait, oh, it finished. And if we take a look at the file that we got, we can see that we got RANSI, which is the industry standard container runtime. So this is the version that is used in IBM Code Engine, and that's the actual binary. You can see that it's a Go binary, so it's pretty large. So that's very, very cool, in my opinion, at least. And let's continue and talk about what we expect to find with this tool, just before we talk about the implementation. So like we saw with IBM Code Engine, 
uh, we can expect a lot of runcy, right? Runcy is the industry standard container runtime. So we can expect to see a lot of it. We might see some old and vulnerable runcy version. We might see some custom changes that cloud provider made to vanilla, to vanilla runcy. And we might even see other runtimes, maybe proprietary runtimes. You really can know. And let's continue with talk, to talk about how is HUSI implemented. So HUSI basically follows two steps. The first step is to trick the runtime to execute itself inside the container. And the second step is to have someone in the container read the runtime binary from proc PID exe and send it to a remote server. So if that si sounds a little complex right now, let's break it down step by step. So the first step is to trick the runtime into executing, it, into executing itself inside the container. So how do we do it? Well, it's pretty simple. That's the Docker file of the container image. All we do is set the entry point to slash proc slash self slash exe. And slash proc slash self exe is a unique uh, magic link in Linux. So whatever process access that path, we will actually see a link uh, to the binary that is running. So you can see in the image below, when LS tries to access proc self exe, he sees that proc self exe points to LS. But when the readlink binary tries to access proc self exe, proc self exe points to readlink. So when we tell the runtime to please execute proc self exe as the container entry point, we actually make it execute itself inside our container. So that's the first step, right? We, we have a way to trick the runtime into, to execute itself inside the container. And the second step is to have someone in the container read that process, that runtime process uh, proc PID exec and send it to a remote server. So that's how it looks, right? We have the runtime, we tricked it to execute itself inside the container. And then our process inside the container reads the runtime executable uh, through slash proc slash runtime PID slash exe and sends it to our remote server, right? So it's actually not that simple because containers can only have one entry point. They are made to run one process. So if we set the entry point to proc self exe and make the runtime execute itself inside the container, we really have no way to spawn our process that is supposed to send the runtime, right? We have no way to spawn the red process in this image. So how, how can we overcome this? Well, the solution is to actually replace the dynamic linker inside the container image. So we assume the runtime is dynamically linked. And in Linux, when a dynamically linked executable uh, starts running, the kernel loads the dynamic linker to the process memory of the uh, dynamically linked executable and transfers execution to the dynamic linker. So the dynamic linker can load uh, the necessary libraries that the process needs. So the kernel actually searches for the dynamic linker from the, in the root file system of the process. And because we trick the runtime to run inside our container, it will actually look, take the containers dynamic linker. So in order to make this happen, we actually only add one line to the uh, Docker file. And that's the second line here. We take, we create a fake dynamic linker and use it and replace the dynamic linker in the container with it. So that's actually a pretty nice trick, but we need to, a way to actually create a dynamic linker. And when I was approaching the, this task, I really had no idea how to do that. So as we've said, uh, the kernel loads dynamic linker to process memory to load uh, shared libraries, right? So first of all, the dynamic, linker, the dynamic linker must be statically linked, right? It cannot have dependencies on other libraries because the dynamic linker is the one that is responsible, that is responsible for loading libraries. Second, you know, second of all, it needs to be written in C or maybe CPP. I haven't tried CPP because uh, languages with complex runtimes like Golang, uh, they don't expect to run in the context which the dynamic linker runs it. 
So they can cause some issues. And at my first try, I tried compiling with uh, glibc, and it turns out that uh, a feature of glibc called thread local storage uh, actually causes some problem. But if you compile with Marcel libc, then everything works fine. So that's how I created uh, my custom dynamic linker. And to wrap things up, that's how the demo we saw worked. So IBM Cloud took our HUSI image. The entry point was set to slash proc slash self slash exe. And when uh, the container was, one, was run, uh, the, our fake dynamic linker was loaded to the runtime process and sent the runtime binary to our remote server. So we have a way uh, to, to read the binary, the container runtime binary from the host, but there is also an assumption in, in, this, uh, in this way, which is that the runtime is dynamically linked, right? Because if the runtime is statically linked, the linker isn't loaded into the memory because it isn't needed. So in this scenario, uh, we need some way to have someone in the container read the runtime and send it to us, right? So I actually gave this some thought and eventually the solution I came up with is to read the runtime whenever is, there is an exec, like a docker exec or, or QCAP, kubectl exec, if you're familiar with it. Whenever there is an exec into the HUSI container, uh, this flavor of HUSI will send the runtime. And most uh, container as a service platforms, they support a uh, docker exec like experience to the uploaded container. So if it's really not clear yet, let's see the Docker file. So we now have our binary just run at the entry point, right? We have a binary that knows how to uh, upload the runtime. And when we run the container, that's what you have, right? Uh, just a process running inside the HUSI container. But then when someone Docker exec inside the container, we actually ask it to exec slash proc slash help slash exe, which makes the runtime process appear inside the container, right? We trick it to execute itself inside the container. And then our upload runtime, which runs as PID1, uh, waits for the runtime to jump in. And whenever it jumps in, it sends it to a remote server. So let's see a demo. So first off, we need a file server, right? And because the file server runs on our local machine, we need to see how Docker container uh, see the IP of the local, local machine. And that's really the IP of the default gateway. So I'm just gonna grab that. And now we're going to run our container. And that's the IP that you can see is the, that we earlier saw is the IP of the host from the context of the container. So you can, you can see this is the wait for exec uh, flavor of HUSI. And HUSI now waits, run, runs as the PID1 of the container and waits for the runtime to exec in. So that's what we're gonna do. And the name of the container. Oops, sorry. And we're gonna ask it to execute prog self exec. And you can see that HUSI noticed the runtime exit in, into the container and uploaded uh, the runtime over here to the file server. And if we try to see what file we actually got, we can see that again, it's the runtime of the underlying host, which also in my uh, Linux VM is run C. So that's how you solve uh, static, that's how I solve uh, statically linked runtimes. Uh, having a process in the container wait for a Docker exec into the container. And that's really how HUSI is implemented. You have this flavor, which is for statically linked runtime, and you have uh, the dynamic linker flavor, which is for uh, dynamically linked runtimes. And when I took HUSI to a uh, real uh, container as a service platforms, I actually saw both. I saw a dynamically linked runtime and I also saw a statically linked runtime. So with that, let's talk about the findings so far. Uh, 
So as I expected in the beginning, uh, I saw a lot, a lot of RANC, which is the, really the industry standard container runtime. But I also saw old and vulnerable RANC versions, which led to some uh, quite interesting research that they yet can't uh, disclose. Uh, well, what about custom changes to vanilla RANC? Well, uh, I really haven't had the time to take a deeper look into that, but from a shallow look, uh, I didn't see any custom changes, but uh, I'm not, uh, like I haven't looked into that uh, to the fullest because I was more uh, preoccupied with uh, vulnerable RANC versions. And finally, I didn't see any other uh, runtime other than RANC. So what's next? Well, you can use Kusi to poke at the underlying container runtime of whatever container as a service platforms you like. You can get visibility into how your containers run on the platform. And maybe you'll find some security issue with the runtime and possibly get a bounty and help harden a container as a service platforms. So right after this talk, I'm going to make this link uh, publicly accessible. And I think I'm ready for, uh, for questions.